Hello, welcome to Access. I'm Rob. Joining us against his will is Dave. Hello, I'm being held captive. Please get help. It's more Resident Evil 7, Dave. That I looks know- amazing, Rob. I know it does. Like, <laughs> I thought it was... That's hard to live tell action if that's footage. not yeah, real live action. Wow. Um, but anyway, you don't have to play Resident Evil 7 today, Dave. You'll Thank be God. relieved to know. Yeah. Uh, this video is uh, Five Ways Resident Evil 7 brings it back to classic Resi. Oh, good. Uh, the first reason oh, good. is uh, it's scary. You may have noticed it's a scary game, Dave, which yeah. uh, may seem obvious, but that is important because for the last few uh, installments, certainly of the main series, the main entries. Uh, Resident oh. Evil 7, Resident Evil hasn't been particularly scary. I mean, Resident Evil 4 was an amazing game. Uh, but it was more action. Yeah, than definitely. horror. Yeah. And uh, 7 oh. takes it back to the to the good old days of Resi 1, 2 and 3. Uh, it's a slower pace. It is terrifying. Uh, you've got sections like what we just saw there with a the fight with Mia where it's up in your face, gruesome, gory, terrifying. But the, the, the terror comes from the tension. Yeah, uh, as I'm sure you're all too aware, Dave, of just being in the house, uh, being in the Baker house, the mansion, and uh, constantly having to hide from people like Marguerite here. Yeah, exactly. It's that is a terrifying bit. It's the sort of um, you know you do have weaponry, but also ammunition is limited. It's that choice of when you're going to try and use your weapons. Are yeah. you going to run out of ammo? Will you need the ammo later on? You're not a SWAT hero like you have been in Resident Evil Four, Five, and Six. Definitely. You know, not. You're not a Leon Kennedy. You're not a Chris Redfield. Uh, you're just a regular guy who finds himself in a horrifying situation and just the horrible overbearing tension of scenes like this. I mean, it's so atmospheric. Yeah. I mean, you know, what a horrible place to be. Oh. Some nice syringes in the toilet there. Um, but our second reason it is taking it back to classic Resi is how compelling the story is. Now, right. I'm like you with horror, Dave. I don't particularly enjoy you know it. Maybe not as bad, but my track record when it comes to finishing horror games is appalling. Like, yeah. I didn't finish Dead Space. I didn't finish Alien Isolation. Didn't even get close to finishing those games. No. I'm going to be finishing Resident Evil 7, though, because there's something about it. It's the way it tells its story is so compelling. Like, here, we've got, we've got these little, this little scene here. We've got kind of, what is this list, list of names there? What is yeah. it? What does this mean? And despite it being scary, it pushes you forward. You're, you're desperate to know what is going on. Why is this family acting the way they are? Like, what is this list of people saying they're turned and dead. You know, what is going on? I'm forced to agree, Rob. I watched you capture this uh, yesterday and I was completely compelled. And, I, I you know, everybody knows I'm a terrible wimp. I, <laughs> I, and I found, I found this game, watching you play it, incredibly terrifying. But at the same time, the reason I couldn't look away is because I was really compelled to know what's going on. And this is awesome as well, the, the videotapes you find scattered around. Um, they're amazing because they give you backstory to the certain characters. This is Mia here, your character's wife. Um, they also give you glimpses of uh, maybe areas that are coming up and they also teach you mechanics. Like inside this videotape, we're learning how to solve the kind of puzzles you'll get where you have to manipulate manipulate an object to create a, sh- a shape on a piece of... It's really a, smart. On a painting to open that thing. So you've got these... This is such a well-told story. It's so well-told and it pushes you forward. And uh, our third point, Dave, is uh, it is survival horror. Yeah, very much. Which is a key point because we've had action horror with uh, Resident Evil 4, 5 and 6. This is very much survival horror. You're not going around blasting everything. Your main goal is to survive. So in a situation like this where usually you fight this guy, I'm just going to put one bullet in his head and then I'm going to run. Yeah. I want to be conserving my ammo. I want to survive. I just want to get out of there. Yeah. And... That kind of uh, lends itself to the slow pacing of it, inventory management, which we will get onto later. And these things are mad. Just, oh. Yeah, they're foul, aren't they? But but compelling, again, it's like, I, you know, I don't just hate them and they're not just zombies. There's something more here. Yeah, I want to like, know what why? they are. Why are they in this house? This is a demonstration of uh, how not to play survival horror, Dave. As you can see, I am putting way too much of my ammo into this thing. Yeah. But you did survive. So I did survive. That's the main thing. <laughs> yes. You know, that's a, that's quite a key point. I mean, uh, it's weird, isn't it? What is Look this area in the house? I don't know. What is this stuff? 
I, I really Hanging enjoy the, walls. the mystery. I really enjoy the sort of detective aspect of it. You know, you are looking around, looking at clues, picking up things, you know, maybe drawing conclusions, maybe not. It's kind of there for you to uncover or not. You know, you can just, just sort of complete your objectives and just try and get out and not worry about what's going on so much. But for me, definitely, it's... Um, yeah, the just ro- rooting through drawers, uh, reading oh. notes. I mean, you looked at the fridge in VR yesterday and found descriptions of people that have been cooked. Yeah. And you're thinking, what on earth is going on in this yeah. house? But you're desperate to find out. I did want to know, yeah. It's so it's so compelling. And uh, uh, number four, we've touched on it, uh, inventory management. Oh, it's that's, a classic, isn't that's it? That's a classic resi that thing, is a isn't classic. it? Uh, you've got limited inventory space. Uh, you've got to think about whether it's worth you taking an item if you see it. You can't just loot everything. It's not Skyrim or The Witcher. You can't just scoff everything up. No. Um, I saw you faced with, with that choice we will, yesterday. We will see it later on. Uh, we've got the chemical fluid here. That could be combined with uh, herbs to God, create... God, I love combining things. ...to create uh, first aid medicine. And I like this as well. You open this box and there's a lock pick inside it. I opened another box like that. There's just a load of maggots in it. Yeah. Uh, so there's another herb. It's classic great, resi. It? And, but you do have uh, like lockers that you come across, right? So that you can yeah. store things in. You can, st- yeah. That's another. Uh, you can store uh, items in item boxes, and you'll often find item boxes in save rooms. And you save the game using a uh, tape recorder, which harks back to the uh, the old typewriters yeah. of old Resident Evils. And you can combine chemical fluid. You ju- we just saw it there with gunpowder to, to create ammo as well. Which so this, cool. here you are faced yeah. with, the, uh, you want that picture of the treasure. I've got to be honest, Rob, I think you've committed a cardinal sin there, using a herb at a point. I know. Maybe you don't need to. But then I've not got enough space for the scorpion you key. Need and the I scorpion need the scorpion key. key. And so, I mean, this is a, an, uh, an illustration of how not to manage your inventory effectively. I'm, I hear I have to waste, I need that key. Yeah. I don't want to waste a lockpick, so I have to waste a first aid medicine. But that Which is, is just not good, is it? It's not good, but that is that is what it's about. Like that is part of the game, isn't it? Is using your inventory, understanding what you need at any one time, and of course, making these hard decisions. Yeah. Some items, like the shotgun, take up two blocks in your inventory as well. Yeah. So you know, and uh, our final point, Dave, is a. Uh, this is a very personal game. The horror is right up in your face. Yeah. Like uh, old resis, the, the camera angle was always static and fixed, so you couldn't see what was around the next corner. And I think the, sh- the shift to first person is a really effective way of uh, giving you that same sense, but in a modern game. Yeah, that's a really good point, You can't have actually. fixed camera angles, where your view is still restricted. Uh, your movement, when you're in combat, it's kind of, you know, you, you can't just duck behind cover and vault over bits of cover and yeah. you can't see what's around you. There's a nice bit of scare there. Lovely. Yeah, that's cheap, Resi. Cheap. So, I think you're, you're right, actually, Rob. That's a really good point. You know, you don't know what's behind you at any one time. It means you've got to heighten your senses, like listening and things like that. I mean, look you how know. cramped it is. It really makes you feel claustrophobic playing it. Everything is, is there's no... There's no distance. It's all right in your face. And, and it really and kind of helps ramp up the atmosphere. Often with the lighting, you know, you've got a torch that looks where you're looking. It means you're forced to have to confront yes. things. Like, if you <laughs> want to see what that is, you're going to have to look at it. You know, you, you can't just... Yeah, something you didn't get, actually. It's a really good point. With the That was horrible. With the old fixed cameras, obviously, you know, they still had scares and, and, stuff and, and things, but you kind of had to see everything. Yeah. yeah at once by the nature of it. So I think that's a really good point, yeah. Because I know some people were unsure about Resi going first person, but they've used it in a really think, smart way. It's I not think just it's a, an excellent choice. Because if this wasn't first person, you the horror wouldn't be as intense, I don't think. Yeah. And because and it's about hiding and things, you need to feel that what that yeah. is like, what your character's going through hiding. You know, when I see you buy some boxes like peeking trying to see that you just wouldn't get the same effect if no. you could see that in the third person. I mean, it's amazing how Resident Evil 7 feels so fresh and so new, but at the same time, so much like classic Resi. I think yeah. it's done an amazing job. Um, but there we go. There are five ways Resi 7 brings it back to classic Resi. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think of the game. It's out now. It's absolutely amazing. Let us know if you're enjoying it. Are you brave enough to play it in VR? Uh, check out the video of Dave playing it in VR. He was very brave yesterday. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, do subscribe so you don't miss anything from the world of PlayStation. PlayStation.